family of uh, Barack Obama in Chicago. He wasn't invited to the White House Health Care Summit last week, but he is going to Washington tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Quentin Young, your response to Senator Baucus, and welcome. Well, Greetings, Amy. Uh, he was naming the ways in which our country is supposedly different from other countries. He neglected one huge one, the, the millions of dollars that people like him receive from these uh, huge uh, vested interests in the health industry and uh, how somehow that influences their certitude that uh, America is not ready for decent health care guaranteed by, by the national government. Uh, it, it's really a major tragedy because time has run out. If, even without the economic downturn, which is a very polite way to describe our present plight, we would have to have this reform. But with it, we will not as economically, let alone medically, survive. And it's painful to have people in high places like Senator Baucus deny the democratic method of, of debating the pros and cons, even, of these various proposals. Uh, it is pitiful, and, and we have to, as uh, has already been pointed out, get the American people outraged at this taking away of the right to decent health care in this richest, still richest, of all countries. So uh, I have no, no pity for Senator Baucus's position. It's wrong, and we're going to have to overcome it. Uh, first, I want to congratulate you, Dr. Young. Uh, this past weekend, hundreds of people turned out for a big celebration. Uh, you're uh, uh, 85 now. You had the Illinois governor, the new Illinois, Illinois governor there. You had three Congress members uh, celebrating your life. Yeah. You've been a longtime friend of Barack Obama. Um, how has he changed yeah. over the years? Well, Barack Obama, as we know, was a community organizer, a very lofty calling in my book, and uh, he made the decision when the opportunity came that he, he could get more done politically, and he uh, accepted the nomination for the seat in the state senate. It's not that long ago, really. It's about six, eight years ago. Uh, Barack Obama, in those early days, influenced, I hope, by me and others, uh, categorically said single payer was the best way, and he would inaugurate it if he could get the support, meaning majorities in both houses, which he's got, and the presidency, which he's got. And he said that on more than one occasion, and it represented the very high-grade intelligence we all know Barack has. However, as his political fortunes went upward, uh, including the campaign for presidency, the nomination, and finally the election, he qualified his, his position from saying it's the best system, but that uh, it, given the past American history with employment-based health care, he would, he would have a plan that, and he has put one forward, that en encompasses uh, other uh, incremental approaches. I want to play wrong. what President Obama uh, himself said about single payer and how his position appears to have changed. This is what he said back in June of 2003, before he was elected even to the U.S. Senate. I happen to be a proponent of a single payer universal health care plan. That was State Senator Obama. Um, this is Senator Obama. He's speaking more recently when he was on the presidential campaign trail. On what you were just addressing, right. and why not single payer? Why not get the corporates right. uh, battling and the lobbyists out of the way right. and just go to a single payer? Well, uh, I've said this before. If I were designing a system from scratch, then I'd probably set up a single payer system. For those of you who aren't familiar with the, the, the terminology, single payer basically means that you've got one uh, government funded program. It doesn't have to all be government run, but it's government funded. Everybody, it, Medicare would be an example of a single payer system if everybody was in Medicare. Um, but the problem is we're not starting from scratch. We've got a system in which most people have become accustomed to getting 
their health insurance through their employer. And for us to sort of immediately transition uh, from that, and given that a lot of people work for insurance companies, a lot of people work for uh, HMOs, you've got a whole system of institutions that have been set up. Making that transition in a rapid way, I think, would be very difficult. And people don't have time to wait. They need relief now. So my attitude is let's build off the system that we've got. Let's make it more efficient. We may be, over time, as we make the system more efficient and everybody's covered, decide that there are other ways for us to provide care more effectively. That's Senator Obama on the presidential campaign trail. Dr. Quentin Young, what's wrong with that? Well, it's one of the few times when uh, Barack has been dishonest. Uh, he knows, and all America knows, that our experience with employment-based insurance and these other Mickey Mouse things have been increasingly a total disaster. You have a, a $2.5 trillion industry with vested interests, the, the private hospitals that for profit, the HMOs, the health insurance industry, making billions upon billions, and things getting worse. Uh, he knows and, and should act on the fact that th time is running out. The American people are hurting. Over a million Americans go bankrupt due to medical bills each year. And there's a new study, incidentally, that will show that 50 percent of, of the bankruptcies are, are uh, due to health costs. Uh, it will be 60 percent. So we have a worsening situation. And a man who wants to lead a country which is in great peril had best do some courageous things. I really feel that uh, we have to mount a national concern about this. It's, it's, as a doctor, up until, what, a year ago, after 60 years of practice, I can testify that this system is, well, broken is a gross understatement. It's wrecked, and it's, it's ruining people, and, and the public can't put up with it anymore. And Dr. Quentin Young, explain over and over, you hear uh, Senator Baucus, you hear President Obama saying it's not that they're against this, at least Obama certainly was saying this, it's that it's impractical and people won't support it. What is the polling, what are the polling figures on single payer? And we almost never see it discussed on television unless an opponent brings it up. Well, let me say, uh, we have single payer in this country. It was enacted in 1965. It's called Medicare. And it was uh, put through the Congress by Lyndon Johnson. And in overnight, overnight, in one year, the system was, in, was in, put in place. And it's probably the best insurance program in the whole country. The seniors of this country are highly dependent on Medicare. It's, it's kept them from penury. And uh, that's, it was done in one year, Amy. Uh, no, no drag out, no problems. All the things that people worried about just didn't happen. Now we're talking about somewhat more complicated, but not much, giving single payer to everybody in the country. It's its simplicity that is its, its virtue. It, it has uh, uh, one source of payment. Doctors don't have to wait, as they do so often presently. There's no hassles. There's uh, people who will be unemployed. They're, let's concede the, the vast army of people that are dedicated to denying care in the present insurance system will be no longer needed. And we, our bill, House Bill 676, uh, sponsored first of all by, by Congressman Conyers, but with 92 supporters in the last Congress, we're up to 60 in this. It's extremely popular. This, this bill will, will uh, once enacted, will take a year at the most to fully implement and then the huge burden of fear of getting sick, which is the plight of almost all America. It's not a poor person's problem any longer. It's middle class America. And it has to be changed. I, I, I wish somehow Brock could see this as, as the thing that will give dignity and grace to his, his tenure at, at the very beginning. It's very important that this be enacted. It seems that the single most important word that people are using is choice that people want yes. choice.
Uh, indeed they do, and indeed they're entitled to it. That choice has all but disappeared under the burden of private insurance schemes, which gives you limited panels. Uh, an employer, which has been vaunted minutes ago by, by President Obama, these employers change plans and, and you have to get brand new doctors, continuity is lost. It's, it's a zoo. The, the choice under single payer is total. The only limiting factor is the number of people a doctor may see. And at that apart, your, your card is good for any, any program you approach. And it's, it, it choice is, is total. And it, it really is uh, the only way to go. Let me mention something that's important enough to be uh, underlined. In the, under the weight of this private insurance system, doctors have finished training with huge debts, $150,000 on average, and, uh, and the specialties, as it's worked out under a private system, are paid on average two to three times what primary care doctors get. Primary care is very simple. It's, it's family practitioners, pediatricians,